All right, hey everyone, welcome, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? What's up, what's up, what's up? We are doing another one-on-one -on -one lesson today. We have Elfins here. How's it going? Elfins? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I'm uh, just hanging out. Cool. Uh, <laughs> well, you've been, um, I know you actually, because you've been in, in David's group, um, training like weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Actually, maybe you could just let people know like how, how's it going? How's your experience with that been so far? Uh, it's been really good. And actually, uh, the group lessons have made kind of uh, made a revelation that uh, practicing chess and training chess is way more fun with other people. <laughs> mm. um, mm -hmm. You know, it's all, it turns out studying over reading all the books by yourself is super boring, but doing it with friends is a uh, way more fun. So it's helped a lot. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm, I totally agree. I think I've always done better when I'm working with like at least one other person that you can like interact with and kind of test yourself against. Um, yeah, so that's that's great. And so, um, well, you are you were recently just telling me you just recently hit fourteen hundred uh, in uh, online chess, um, and now we're talking like your next goal basically fifteen hundred. <laughs> just keep working on up. Yeah, hopefully we can get 1500 any minute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best to get you there. I think you can make it. I think it's, it's not that far of a jump. Like once you get to 1400, you're, percentage wise, you're very close uh, of, of the way there. Um, so we're definitely going to hope to get your rating up along, along with everyone else in the dojo. We're trying to raise everyone's rating really. <laughs> um, are you doing anything uh, to like work on your chest outside of the lessons, like any puzzles or anything like that? Yeah, I do puzzles pretty much every day. Um, yeah, never skip a day of puzzles. Uh, review some master games. Um, I do review master games sometimes, uh, although that, that's uh, been more recently, haven't always done that. Um, and then I, re I review my games. I review most of my games. Um, I don't review the bullet games because, yeah. <laughs> that mm. would hurt me. Yeah, I would say maybe don't even play bullet. <laughs> Why the bullet if you can? Unless you're just playing for fun, then that's that's fine. Um, that's totally okay. Um, okay, great. So doing a lot of puzzles, and um, so you mentioned yeah before the stream that just like lately your issue has been, I guess like converting winning positions, or you seem to be blundering a lot in in winning positions. Is that right? Yeah, I feel like especially recently, a lot of the games that I'm losing, uh, I can tell I'm completely winning, you know, up a piece or um, just my opponent's position has nothing to do and I'll make a one move blunder or lots of times I'll see that I have a tactic that can't be stopped and my opponent will make a move that does not prevent the tactic or save their position, but I'll practically pre-move the next move, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And is it and like a time thing? Yeah, or are you like low on time when you're blundering or...? Uh, uh, no, it's um, very rarely. I mean, sometimes I'll get low on time in Blender, but honestly, it happens just as much when I have, you know, half of my starting time on the clock. Okay. Gotcha. And honestly, most of the time, I am not. I don't get in time trouble very often. Okay. Yeah, so, right. To me, that usually suggests, I mean, it's very natural. People at all levels Blender, and generally, the higher you are, the lower you are, the more and less you're going to, or less and more you're going to Blender, right? So it's just like, as you blunder less you'll let's say give away less games and you'll earn more points and rating will, will go up so it's definitely a thing kind of like improves um over time for me personally like i think the most useful thing has always just been like blunder checking just like really and when i say blunder checking i mean like you know pretending the position is a puzzle for your opponent if that makes sense like thinking like you know i want to play this move does my opponent have any tactics? And then really trying really hard to find something for them if they have something. And hopefully you can avoid some uh, blunders like this just by really trying to, um, let's say, connect with your opponent and really try to figure out like, okay, what kind of forcing moves is the opponent going to be looking for? What kind of checks or tactics are they gonna be hoping for in the position? And then trying to make sure that I don't like uh, fall into anything like that. Although other times it's just a matter of let's say being awake. Like sometimes we just don't see a piece is hanging, or we put a piece on a square that's uh, under attack, 
we just we just hallucinate we just didn't see the board and that i think is like a focus thing i think it happens to everyone but generally for me when i blunder like that and i think about my mindset i'm like probably i was thinking about something completely different probably i was just in some kind of haze i'm often just like totally out of focus when i find myself um blundering really really badly and then i like wake up and like oh my god <laughs> what what have i done yeah. something something's hanging um so I think what would be cool for us to do today is uh, to basically have you play a game and have you play a rapid game. Um, I'll mute myself so you won't uh, be able to, to hear me, but um, if you can, as much as you feel comfortable with, it would be great if you could vocalize your thoughts kind of during the game, like what you're calculating, what you're thinking, um, how you evaluate different options. Uh, you know, try not to run down too long the clock, of course, don't like spend all your time in the opening, try to play a normal game as much as you can. Um, and then, yeah, afterwards we'll talk about it and discuss your, your thought process. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Um, how about, will a 10 minute game be good? I was actually thinking 15, 10, just to give you a little bit cushion so you can like, feel like you're not in time trouble from like, like three minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll follow you on chess.com. I mean, actually, if you prefer, you can also play someone um, from the chat if someone's interested, or you can just play the pool. It's doesn't matter to me. Um, let's see if anyone in the chat uh, would like to play. Well, yeah, any rating, I guess. I'll play. Oh, no, uh, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> Ideally, around around 14, 1400, like within, let's say, 100 points of that would be perfect. Um, but yeah, there are any 13, 13 to 1500s in the chat. Chess.com rapid rating. Okay, so that's like Lee Chess, maybe 1600 <laughs> to 1800. USCF, uh, maybe 1100 to 1300. Just trying to do the conversions for folks. Um, if not, it is kind of early. And yeah, not everyone always wants to play on the stream. Um, then I'll say go ahead and just get. Uh, regular game going and I'll go ahead and join in the I'll go ahead and jump in the queue okay cool yeah. all right so hopefully I can focus wish me luck everyone yeah good luck dude it's all fun if you blunder something no worries we're all gonna you know we'll all suffer with you <laughs> all right here we go I'm gonna move myself good luck all right they're a little bit lower rated so I don't really get anything oh my gosh All right, so yeah, he's playing 1270. All right, so I like this so far. Not too much. I mean, he hasn't done anything scary or interesting, really. Agreed. He's going to develop pieces and hope that works out. Nice. I think that's usually a good strategy. Actually, knight e5 looks really good. I'm going to pin this knight because I do want to put my knight on e5. <laughs> and I might take this knight just so I can play knight e5 because that it doesn't look like he's going to... Uh... I mean... His pawn structure won't be so great. These double isolated pawns, and I will get my knight e5 like I wanted. I might castle before I play it. Actually, but if I play it right away, I'm also threatening the c6 pawn. Well, I guess if I, yeah, because if I don't play it, he could play like bishop d6, and then I wouldn't, you know. Uh, well, yeah, because then he could take my knight first. So I'm actually going to play it right away. It makes a threat. I can castle. I like castling and I like threats. So my opponent's playing too fast. <laughs> He's playing too fast because I don't think his position's good. Okay, but we're playing a little quick too. So we'll have to we'll have to make a note of that. I feel yeah, like he doesn't have any pieces. He's playing well, well, but so could be spending a little bit more time. He's got to show me something. Maybe he'll play f6. F6 would be very instructive. For the chat now he gets a bad position and now he's thinking okay <laughs> i'm okay with that and then am i actually planning to take on c6 like does he have some insane like if does he have some insane threat that's a good or question plays like yeah. i don't see it i'm not convinced Yeah, I'm not convinced. Yeah, it looks, looks very bad. Okay, so he defends. 
I mean, probably C5 red, was the best move there for black. But Sinbad, knight takes C6, um, hits the queen. That's the problem. So black has to figure that out before, before bishop B7. I kind of want to just castle because castling is. Um, if I castle also, maybe he wants to play C5. But if I castle and then he plays C5. I have the option. Hmm. I mean, hmm. I'm not going to take the C pawn. I might. Hmm. If I play D5, it would be attacked three times. I'm only defended once. Only defended twice. What if I stacked on f7? What if I just played knight takes f7 right away? Also, what about if I play queen f3? I have time. Yeah, I have time to, to think about Good. this. I think my position yeah. is better than this. I have time. Good. I like queen f3, by the way. What I if think I just queen make, f3 is a nice Do any move. of these baby threats have anything to them? Because queen f3 not only example, develops with a threat, but it also stops black knight, uh, from six. playing c5. I would probably pin his knight to g5. Again, taking on f7 is so tempting. Knight f7, mm -hmm. king f7, queen h5. No, it is, it, I don't think. I don't think there's really anything to this. G6, no, no, no. And then if I play queen f3, I am attacking the c6 pawn, but. And then I would take it threatening the queen as well. How would he defend that pawn? Hmm. Because he. Hmm. Because he can't play queen at e7. Should I make a threat or should I castle? Classic. Does he have any classic rush available? He could play. Oh no, he can't. Yeah, that would also stop him from playing c5. Because... So let's give it a shot. I don't think he has any real threats. Nice. I like queen f3. I like that he spent time on it. That was good. That was good. Um, yeah, queen f3 is nice because it like develops with tempo and. Okay, I'm not sure if he wants to take on c6, but. At least again we pin the pawn so we don't let black play c5 i think black should have played c5 maybe on the last move and definitely if white castles it, then i think c5 would be <laughs> if he just played like knight f6 and then i took on c6 then he could play queen at d7 yeah queen at d7 mm -hmm. would attack my knight again so this is not a real threat. I actually just helped him develop a piece. It's not the worst thing. So that's good. But he just figured out on his opponent's time the knight c6, queen d7 is like maybe I'll just castle here. Pretty uh, awkward for white, and he doesn't want to take that pawn. So that's a good thing to do on your opponent's turn is just calculate, just little lines like are you actually threatening to take on c6 or not, and then you can kind of figure it out because maybe yeah, knight c6, queen d7. White well, does have some move, knight e5 or something, but um, it's good to kind of think about these things on the opponent's time. Well, also, I mean, he'll play knight of six, and I will just pin the knight. And does he have any threats to help him there? So now he's calculating knight of six, bishop g5, but so far. And actually, if I pin the knight, I'm not. I don't think I want to castle queen side because he does I have. I heard him mention that black can take. I don't want to kill myself by accident. <laughs> not sure if he's seeing queen takes d4 might be possible there, or that this pawn is hanging at all. But I guess we'll see. So I said I wanted to pin the knight, but let's double check. Knight c6, queen d7. Yeah, definitely this isn't the best version of the Scandi for black. I would say with queen d8. I, I mean, it's playable, but, but it's passive. Develop a piece or castle. Developing a piece 
I'm not gonna castle. I don't think I'm gonna castle queen side here. Is there any likelihood that he'll play bishop d6 and take my knight that I like? That might be a good idea for him to do. <laughs> Door likes queen d8's game beat. I'm not really up material or anything. But if we go to an end game, his pawn structure could just be horrendous, right? Oh, also my my D pawn is hanging. So oh, here we go. I should but would I Yeah, and if I and I can't just ignore that because my D pawn will come with um the Dolphins have an OTB rating? I don't believe so, no. My knight as well. Though he said, I think he said I he used to play, play, I believe, in person, but I'm not right. sure if he ever played uh, tournaments or not. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Opponent is a yeah random yeah, victim from the pool. Not, mm. He's thinking yeah, also he would take my knight with a check. So I don't really like bishop e3. Not a fan of that move. I don't like bishop e3. I don't see any moves that make threats, so I think bishop e3 is good enough <laughs> okay it goes for bishop e3 yeah i think this move could have been faster but i don't mind that he spent a lot of time on it um and definitely very solid mode just defending win castle queen side but i just might anyway nice thing about castling here because it would put the rook in the file with his queen which would shut off a lot of which definitely very natural here for white to castle queen side also, if he played bishop d6, he wouldn't really want to take my knight because then he'd be walking. He'd make. He'd be walking into the x-ray, right? Hmm. Queen d6 is weird. Okay, so is, is he thinking to play rook to d8? No, Elfins. The dude is just worried about his pawn. I think that's what's. Um, <laughs> that's the pro That's why he played this move. But black should have done something like bishop b4 or bishop d6. Hey, casual player, thanks for the sub. Um, should white castle kingside or queenside? That's a good question. I think both are very playable in this position. I, I don't really I, see I just one. I want to castle one way or the other. Or the other. His queen doesn't really have that many great squares, so his queen's kind of stuck on the d file now. So. I could get castled and also put a rook on the d file at the same time, or I could just castle king side and still play rook d1. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, 94 is kind but of. Should I be afraid of this move. p file? If I were to castle and he were to play bishop e7, am I fast enough to get anything done before he starts putting heavy pieces on the b file? I think so. All right. Yeah, I think this is totally valid decision. It's kind of like maybe the most active way to play here for white. And yeah, it's going to take black a lot of moves to play like rook totally b8 and do something somehow and get an end game because I think his pawn structure is not so great. Okay, now white has ideas like g4, g5 I would be considering. Especially if black just goes like bishop e7, I, yeah. then g4 just mm -hmm. feels like... Oh, if he plays rook b8 though, I will then c5 
will actually have something to it, so I have to watch out for that. Correct, yeah. Rook B8 and C5. Maybe G4 on the last move is actually worth considering. Actually, no. Would C5 have anything to it? I could just play, I could just play DC5, so... Oh, but my Rook is behind my Queen, so I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Knight is hanging. So C5, DC, Queen takes C5. One thing maybe we're like not fully comfortable with like just seeing the opponent's captures. Like earlier offense wasn't exactly seeing queen takes d4 for some time and now it seems like he's kind of missing like if black goes rook b8 and c5. If I were my opponent, what would I be doing? DC queen Probably playing bishop e7. Well, would he play bishop? Like geez, no, I don't think he has time to play like d6 bishop g7. Yeah, bishop e7. He probably wants to just castle king side, put rooks on the b file and get something done. So can I not give him time to do all that? How can I prevent... How can I not give him time to do all of that stuff? Yeah, now bishop f4 looks kind of annoying. How can I not give him time to do what he wants to do? Asking the right question. What about g4? g4, g5? Knight d5. Bishop f4 makes a pretty simple direct threat. I like bishop f4. Finding a lot of good moves. What is my bishop doing on e3? I kind of just moved it out of the way to develop it and defend the pawn. Now the pawn's fine. This, hmm. this queen is awkwardly placed, and I think that bishop f4 punishes his queen for being awkwardly placed, right? Hmm. Four. So if he wanted to deal with the problem of his queen being awkwardly placed, he would play queen d8, which would leave him just, it's just underwhelming. So we'll just play it. got to speed up because I am down on time. Let's try to use this increment a little bit. No, well, it's a good move. And that's the nice thing about increment is now it's like, okay, the three minutes is actually not that big of a deal. I think my pieces are just more you always have that 10 is. second increment. My construct is better. So I just need to. And I have multi. I think I have a couple ways to win this, but I do have a way to lose this on the B file. I've never played Dota, but if the team chat is like Overwatch team chat, then I'm yeah I'm hearing you guys. Because so Overwatch team chat is like. And every other game, someone's getting flamed. Not even for playing badly, just like playing the wrong character. Every game, someone's getting like... He kind of has to deal with this. These starts of discoveries. Oh, Roach is tame in comparison. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, now black has a problem because the queen is lined up, so if black castles or something, white's going to play knight g6 and win some material. In the media threat, knight g6, knight takes f7, huge threats. So, but if black just moves yeah, the queen, queen b4 would probably be a, then white hmm. it can maybe just take on c6. Queen because queen b4, and I don't really want to play a3 because he can back up his queen and then he's probably, he's almost certainly going to stack on a3. So if he does play queen b4, a3 might get me killed faster, <laughs> so... What if you I actually like A3 because the queen is running very low on square, so queen b4, I think A3 is a very good move there. 
this queen has to go somewhere like queen b6 or queen a5 and then we even have like knight c4 like the queen actually has very few squares over there I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I would want to play knight c6 then either. Maybe knight d3. Hmm. He's spending a lot of time, which is good. Play queen b4. Okay, now white has some concrete stuff here. There's knight takes c6 possible, there's a3. Knight c6, I think. It's maybe a little bit risky because again we're walking into a I don't pen. Want to just chase his queen around and, and get nothing for it. Queen to be six. He's still not castled. He is still not castled. King is still not castled. Is there anything to that? Or why can just make simple move a3 and just kick the queen? Yeah, of course, 100 points is not that much in chess, especially at low rating ranges. Like this game can definitely go either way very easily. Um, that's not clear. Hmm. Yeah. What about? I lose games to people all the time that are like two, three, three, 400 points all rated. Just, it happens. Queen a5 <laughs> or queen b6? No one's perfect. And it's not just even being better than your rating, it's just hmm. for any one game, it's not like you just play at 1400 level every queen game. Six. Sometimes you play above your level, sometimes you play below your level. Kind of depends on like the opening that you get. Maybe it's a comfortable opening for you, maybe it's an opening you struggle against. Uh, I'm sure many players score better with white than with black. Also, and is vice he versa. now again threatening to play? So, any number of things. C5. What if I made a threat again? Right? No, that's not a that's not a good threat. I mean, G3 is not good. Okay, you can't play c5 because this queen's hanging. <laughs> okay, knight d3. Not sure if he notices that the d pawn, pawn is hanging though. But his pawn is hanging. But his pawn is doubled, so this wasn't really. This was a scam. His hanging pawn was doubled and not very healthy anyway, so this was a scam. Okay, but what's he gonna do on queen takes d4? I mean, it looks really dangerous for black to open up the d-file, but I'm not sure if Elfins is fully aware of this pawn thing. This was a scam. Uncastled okay. He's still not castled. Is there anything I can do about him not being castled? C5. Whoa. Right. Okay, now things are gonna get real sharp. <laughs> so what's going on here? You can take on B4, but then black will take on F3, GF, C B, right? Um, so this one is super messy. So black gets the piece back and then pawns on the structure on white's queen side are kind of wrecked. Black. Takes takes. I think knight c6 was possible, yeah, but it, it definitely is kind of tricky. Black goes queen b6, and there. I'm thinking maybe white has to play like d5 there to but hold on to the knight. My, I can just put my rook on the 7th rank. 
takes takes takes. Okay, he takes. He castles. And he doesn't have to castle. So what's happening on bishop takes f3? I don't know if this has anything to it. Do I have any other moves here on c5? I feel like white could have also considered like maybe queen g3. So I did fix his pawn just structure just queen. a little bit. Um, and there's queen takes d4. Okay, okay so he goes for the end game, so takes, takes, fast. takes, 94. And well, now we just kind of have to play fast. Yeah, interesting end game we got. I would say now black has basically solved their problems. If he plays something like knight d5, he's like totally fine here. If he defends c7 and then white structure is back. If he takes, then black is going to be clearly worse. Oh, he takes. Ooh, guys, huge mistake there. Oh, man, taking on e4, fixing white structure. Um, Big no no. Definitely should have played knight like, d5. No? Um, no? No, sir? Should I push? Should I do anything? His bishop, yeah, his bishop is kind of. Uh, hmm. Yeah, 94, big mistake. Now white's pawns in the uh, center are beautiful. The option See, Elfins understands the value of a good structure and trading on your own terms. Now, if black takes this one, he gets to improve with hg so bishop g3 actually i think very nice subtle move i like that a lot because now it's not easy for black he has to kind of develop this tension my h1 rook that has been collecting dust yeah now white is definitely at least a little better for okay, sure now maybe you'll reconsider taking my bishop sir look at this he's playing like like positional genius just like putting pressure creating a little a little threat and now black is under pressure to take on g3, and then he can choose whether take with the bishop or with the pawn. Mm. So black plays g5. He is angry. A little bit weakening. He is angry. Um, but now... He could play e5. He could also take on d6 and then go e5, cracking black structure completely. Actually, I think that would be really strong, taking and going e5. Something like this pawn on g5 ends up mm. collapsing and then black's king and rooks are like totally scattered so white should have like huge advantage here so to me taking you can also start with e5 but then if black it's gonna be interesting to see how he takes if black takes back or takes on e5 He takes with the bishop. I think that's a good choice so that the rook can actually be opened up. Okay, so not much, but he has a couple weaknesses. Yeah. Maybe. No, white is better. White is clearly better here. Black has several weak pawns. There's got a few weaknesses that maybe we can poke at. And, and it's underdeveloped. Maybe that's enough. Who knows? Yeah. Some chances here for white. Maybe but I was we'll see. this we'll whole see. time. <laughs> H6. Maybe I was creepy. Rick d4. I like that he's picked up the pace as well. Now, this is not a position where you want to be spending like 30, 45 seconds of move. You might be going a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, well, I would like to try to get to the seventh rank. Okay, black just played well, c5. To plan. Now maybe rook d6. Yep, I'm getting in this way. I'm guessing black goes king e7. If white goes rook d1, black might start getting counterplay like rook f8 or rook d8. So I think it's actually closer to a draw at this point. But we'll see. A lot of stuff can still happen in the end game. All according to plan. A lot of stuff, I think. Now it'd be interesting to see if black offers the king and pawn endgame with rook d8. And then whether white should take it or not. I'm really not sure. Yeah, f4 was also a move. Yeah, definitely. 
But F4, like, rook g8, you know, it's like... Black still he defends. No, he's not going to take my rook. Okay, black um, offers the king and pawn in game. But which, where do I want my rook, though? Where do I actually want... D1 rook? I think... D3? No, I don't think so, Flash. I don't think king and pawn in game was good. Because Black's king comes in just as quickly as our king comes in. You know, like we take twice on d8, we go king d2, right? Black goes king c7, this game. king d3, king so. c6, king c4, but then Black can just kind of shuffle. And this thunder to make my opponent blunder, because I don't want to lose and we three don't points. Really, we don't really get anywhere from c4, so I think king and pawn in game is actually not... Not so great. Yeah, hard to make progress for our king there. But I like rook d3 because now white threatens to maybe take at some point and then switch over. Yeah, I would think either it's drawn or maybe even better for black because the problem is that king and pawn in game, if the king ever leaves c4, black's king can get to the d5 square and like this e5 pawn is kind of weak. So I don't know, like. I would I would be pretty cautious before going into that as white. Yeah. Unless you were really sure, I would be very cautious before entering in, in general, guys, because because like you miss one thing and it's like you're just losing all of a sudden. <laughs> so, to be very careful. Okay, black trades, giving white a big option here. Now, ed is not that incredible because the pawn is just immediately blockaded. I think I want to take with the pawn. So when he goes to grab that pawn, I will go after his H pawn. But it is interesting. I think I probably would have taken with, with the there. rook to keep control because then if rook d8, we and can I'll take on his king until he finds a way to grab my d pawn. Actually, it's, it might be a little annoying for him. We'll see how black handles it. I think black should be okay. But yeah, white has ideas here of just switching over. I'm a centralized machine. Yeah, that's, that pawn move um, does nothing for you, my guy. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so wait, now maybe for king you, can guy? just start coming in. Mm -hmm. So definitely still chances. Mm, I don't think it's fast enough. I'm going to activate my king while you figure out how to grab my past pawn. Hey. Do now rook so f8 is good. That's pawn. a nice move. It's kind of the king. Try to do other stuff. Hmm. Now maybe time for white. Well, actually, you gotta really watch out because if hmm. black is able to give this check and take, then we're losing that pawn. A good idea. Right. So we gotta make sure we're not Perfect. blundering into the rook trade. So maybe if king e2 or something. C3, I'll give him an entry might point. Be, so I don't like that. Might be needed. How about I just. Back my rook up one square. So my rook king is fine. A little more. I like rook d2. Now on the check, he can just go king e4. But still, it's like black can give check. I think black now is probably totally fine. Like black can give check in rook h3, for example. And the thing is, like, very hard for white to actually push the pawn, right? Because it's totally blockaded. So black is doing the right thing and ignoring the pawn. Elephants, I think, was kind of expecting black to go after the pawn. Maybe that's a good assumption at this level. Maybe that's what players that normally do. But black here finds really good idea to just keep the king check me out. blockading king and using the rook passively. H3. Yeah, so now rook f3, rook h3 seems like rook an idea. Four, yeah, that's fine. Go for it. You can go here, but then h5. So it could be turning a little bit, and at some point white is going to have to figure out how to activate his rook, because he can't just keep his rook stuck here forever. Right? Then black is just going to take this one, come around this way, take that one, and just wait. So h5 first, very subtle. I don't think there's anything for me to do. And now, yeah, white has like no moves all of a sudden. My points. My yeah, now the blacks started using their time, started playing much better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't think there's anything for me to do. I don't know. That's awkward. Mm -mm. I don't think there's anything for me to do. Man. Yeah, tough position. I mean, you can go king e5, but it just doesn't doesn't really help white's position that much. I right, just can go here. Yeah, definitely white was doing much better earlier. That's right. Mm -mm. Yeah, so we'll have to analyze where it went wrong. He's gonna take my H pawn. He's not going to take my H pawn. Gives check, okay. Well, we should be pretty happy with the draw here because now I think black uh, is looking better. The increment makes this torture. <laughs> Is black bullying? No, not at all. He's trying to convert it. Okay, white's just shuffling. But that's fine, there's not much white can really do here except just sit back and forth. Now, actually, it's not so easy. If black gives rook f3, rook h3, then king f4, and white goes after the g4. The increment pawn. honestly makes this torture. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, king e3, he's just staying, staying put. So what happened? Well, the problem is white um, ooh, rook e5, I'm not sure about that one. That lets um, white wait. activate. Um, the what's, problem is white the got his rook very passive here. Sure. Yeah, so both the king and the rook were passive. Black's king looks passive, but it's like holding down white's rook, right? So it's, from black's point of view, totally fine. Now black has just committed a grave mistake rook e5 check, allowing white to activate. I don't know if this was the cleanest way for him to do whatever he's trying to do. Whoa, g3. Okay, time to calculate. Time to calculate. <gasps> How is he gonna check me? Take so quickly. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, guys. This was a free rook here. And then Black's pawn is getting stopped. Rook d1. And then he took FG after okay. seven seconds. What? I'm so confused. Unbelievable. Well, okay, it's what? dead lost anyway. Um, but very strange what is he from doing? both sides. What? From both sides. From both sides. I don't understand. I don't understand either. <laughs> Do I just like win? Yeah, for what I don't like G4 actually, just take the pawn. No, wait, what? Sir. Oh, Elfin needs to be really careful because he's about to give his opponent uh, a passer. He has lost his way. I think he lost his way. Um, well, yeah, you know, what, guys, it's, it's a lot of mistakes here. A lot of mistakes. Yeah. He was supposed From both to sides. take my three points. From both sides. Now we're doing good. Now we're doing good. But yeah, lots of talk. Man, just the last 10 moves is like a full hour long lesson in its <laughs> in and of itself. <laughs> so. This is a check, and the next move is a check. But I'm not going to give you any more moves. Oh no. Well, it's not a check if you go there. But it doesn't matter. All right, now we're good. Now we're good. Now technique should be 
Should be good. I didn't deserve that. Okay, okay, GG, GG. <laughs> what? He, he entered at the end. Um. <laughs> he what? This, this is why I'm 1400 because people do that. He, I thought I was doing quite well in the opening, and I guess not. <laughs> yeah, you were. I thought you were too. Yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> um, no, that was really interesting. Okay, yeah, a lot happened at the end there. That was pretty dramatic. <laughs> I guess we'll we'll get to it. Um, but uh, yeah, GG, that was really interesting to watch. I have definitely have some notes and some questions we can talk about. Yeah, that's uh... um, Let me get this into an analysis board. And public okay and I'll send you the link to this one in uh, discord all right I clicked the link. Well. Wait, maybe try it again. Sometimes it can be weird. Um, let me just go live chest and then I'll click the link. Huh, it doesn't, wait, yeah, it doesn't have, it's just me. Huh? Oh, it's still not board. there? Hmm. Um, how about, see. how about I try this? Okay, I added you as a friend. If you see that and can accept it, then I can maybe invite you to the board. Accepted the friend request. Okay, let's see if I can invite you. Uh, yeah, you should see something pop up. Okay, there you go. Cool. Wait, I thought I, well, I thought I clicked on it, but it still doesn't show. It's just me. I, like I'm at the analysis board, but it's just me there. Yeah, let me let me send you another one, maybe. Huh? I don't see it either. It's weird. Um, are you in like the like chess.com slash live or yeah or like uh, the new one because they have like a new a new live uh, section. Yeah I'm sitting in live chess now. Weird. Uh, okay let me send you another one. Not sure what's happening. Oh, there we go. Oh, you're here now. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. All right. So let's uh, let's talk about this opening. So I thought you played it well. Um, e6, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Um, maybe you took this one a little bit quickly. You can definitely consider going back, but um, like bishop a4. But uh, yeah, I, I don't mind bishop c6. I think it was a very reasonable decision. Takes. Um, and we played knight e5, which I thought was fine. 
This should be seven. Okay, and then around here, I think you started slowing down a little bit, which was good. Uh, and then you play queen f3, which I liked. Uh, knight f6, bishop e3, queen d6, castles. Yeah, I thought you played a great game, actually, so far. Uh, bishop f4. Did you have any questions uh, on any of these moments? Um, I wasn't sure if I should have been afraid of queen b4 or not. I don't think so. But I was, you know, I felt I was maybe, I don't know if I was being too dangerous castling queenside uh, and then, you know, provoking him, you know, giving him a direct reason to play queen to b4. Um, but I think I was, I think I was, you know, safe to do that. Yeah, so definitely, right, we're, um, I think castling was, let's say, ambitious. You can also castle kingside and your position is pretty solid as well, but definitely, uh, definitely reasonable. And yeah, there's not much the queen can do to you on its own here. It's like not really supported by any pieces. You have no weaknesses. Um, yeah, basically black has no threats. Actually, one move I think you discarded, um, maybe not for the right reasons, was a3. Because I think um, I think I heard you say you just felt like this might be too weakening or something. Yeah, I was thinking that he would end up playing queen b6, and then I would have to worry about bishop takes a3. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, definitely this is like an okay concern to have. But if we evaluate this one, it's not much. Even if Black somehow gets the the second pawn, really like, um, yeah, these sacks are are only dangerous if the opponent can really bring in a lot more pieces into the attack. Um, but one move I'll just point your attention to is knight c4 you have, which is a really nice yeah, move. I was, just, I was just thinking, why didn't I think of knight c4? <laughs> yeah, well, it's a backwards move. Yeah, not so obvious. <laughs> uh, but this just totally kills black's play. Because now queen has to go to like a7. Oh, and that knight can never be moved either. Well, not by a pawn, so very good. Yeah, you're just totally dominating here. Um, okay, still black wants to play c5, so we kind of have to keep this idea in mind. But yeah, basically, yeah, you're uh, totally crushing here. Um, so definitely a3 could have been played. And um, actually, I had a question for you. On knight d3, what did you want to do on queen takes d4? Yeah, I, you know, I've played knight d3, and I was like, you know, if he could take the pawn and he would walk into an x-ray, but... I don't think I had any real threats, <laughs> any th real threats of discoveries there. Um, I was almost thinking I might just put the knight right back on e5, to be honest. I mean, it's it's not a bad try, for sure. Uh, you could say this is a pawn sack, because you're you getting some time. Yeah, um, and I mean, even, it's like I sacrifice, it's like, well, I, I hang or sacrifice the pawn. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it, it does open the position more, and his king is still not castled, and I'm making moves with tempo so there's something to it i don't know if it's if it's good but there's something to it okay no no absolutely yeah i just wanted to hear kind of yeah your thoughts on it um yeah, let's go back people are asking about knight takes e6 i thought it was possible here but it is very risky to put yourself in a pin like this so i saw mm -hmm. i was thinking i think i started talking less here because i was thinking knight c6 queen b6 and then i was looking at uh, d5 right um and i was unclear as to whether or not i was surviving that um but i now that i look at it now i see it on the board if you played e takes d5 i could just play knight takes e7 and i'm probably doing quite well actually yeah absolutely yeah if you get this in king has to take that's yeah you're just in great shape yeah. um but you're right i think it's not that clear maybe knight takes d5 for example and then if 97, let's say like 97, I would say um, probably black is okay here. Like should have a tempo next to uh, to castle. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. But it seems like intuitively you felt like this was very risky. Yeah, I did. I, I just didn't, I didn't realize that after e takes d5, I would just have knight takes e7. Mm. Um, so I missed some ideas there. I, uh, 
but I did think that generally I was kind of uh, maybe walking into too much. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that that's a good thing to have because any kind of self pin like this, you are asking for trouble, especially like the bishop is just so bad on b7. This better be like the healthiest extra pawn ever if you if we're gonna take yeah. it and like open up the bishop. So I think yeah, it, I was, a good I, I instinct not to grab it. it so. Yeah, I didn't think it was worth it to put myself in danger when the pawns doubled, so it would, you know, likely be weak later anyway. Right. Uh, I think that's um, that's good. Oh, we lost your camera. Oh, it's uh, I think. Is it? Um, yeah, not super critical, but oh well, you know, whatever. Okay, then the game got super, super sharp with c5. Yeah. Um, can you still hear me? Mm hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, um, yeah, so c5, um, yeah, I, I guess that was probably the move that gave them the most chances here. Um, unfortunately, he, this, I think this move gets rid of his weaknesses, unfortunately, because unfortunately, after all the exchanges, my c3 knight would be hanging, so I'd have to use a tempo to move it. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I had any better options. I guess I could have just moved my queen, but I could have played like queen e3 or something. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Like, um, on knight takes b4, you spent 40 seconds, which is not bad. Um, but on the previous moves, like queen f3, and um, bishop e3, and castles, and bishop f4, and knight e3. You spend more time on all these moves. You spend like two and a half minutes on queen f3, almost three minutes on bishop e3, over a minute on castles, almost two minutes on bishop f4, and then another two and a half minutes on knight e3. I think you spent a lot of time on these moves because you had a lot of options here. Um, but after c5, I would say, like this position has become super sharp. Now both queens are hanging, this is the position where like you kind of should be spending that kind of time i think in a rapid game like on the longer end two and a half three minutes uh because there's a, a lot to consider here and a lot to calculate um and then later we'll talk about uh one moment where i think you also played very very fast in <laughs> in a position that i would deem let's say like critical i would say like after c5 it's critical because it's like um the difference between the best move and the second best move here could be pretty massive. And uh, and we just don't know, right? It's like we might have one really good move, we might have several good moves, we might have only one move that keeps the quality and everything else is like losing all of a sudden. Um, we're not really sure, but we need that, we need to spend time to at least give us, give ourselves the best chance of um, figuring it out. Right. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, maybe that one thing you can think about is um, spending more time when the situation gets very sharp and, and concrete. Because one thing you were doing that I thought was really good actually was, I think somewhere around here. Yeah, on queen f3, your opponent was thinking, and you were kind of calculating lines on your opponent's turn. You were saying like, oh, if they play knight f6, maybe I can take, then they have queen d7. Oh, that doesn't look so good. You're being very concrete and doing this like deliberate analysis. So you just need to do that on your turn as well. <laughs> <laughs> when the situation gets like really, really sharp, you got to switch to this like very concrete mode. Right. Um, so yeah, now knight takes before might well be uh, the best move, but right, white does have some options, like queen g3 maybe is interesting. Um, and then on takes takes, uh, yeah, maybe knight takes a6 is a move. You know, which is hard to notice, but once you do, then you kind of owe it to yourself to at least, at least think about it for a little bit. Well, I did see, uh, like, just moving the knight, um, but my rook 
I saw that my rook was also hanging. Right. So yeah, that's that's the issue, and that's why we want to go like gf3, but knight a6 hits, um, knight takes c7. Oh, <laughs> it makes a, it makes a threat as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, basically, it's just not easy to calculate. You just, you have to spend, uh, time here when there's, like, lots of stuff hanging in the position, because you might have some, some fancy tactic, um, that is really strong. Um, you know, maybe dc is a good move for some reason like sacrificing the exchange and then maybe you get something at the end i don't think it works but the idea is that like yeah you might have uh different options along the way worth worth investigating right um but uh yeah okay so then we get gf3 takes 94 and then this part actually i thought you played really well um so your opponent makes yeah, I gotta say, I mean, I don't know if it's the biggest mistake of the game, but it's like, this one was the hardest chance. move to watch. <laughs> I think most most of the game I was betting on my pawn structures better than him, so in games favor me, and then I, I have this position and he, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a real gift. Yeah, definitely I was thinking just knight d5 here, and I thought black is at least fine. Um, like, everything is being held together, but um, okay, he takes, and then bishop g3 was great. Uh, and then kind of, and then Rook G1 also really, really solid move. Love this um, G5. And um, okay, yeah, I thought you played it interesting. I was thinking maybe trading on D6 and then playing E5 might have been um, a little bit better um, because here you kind of you don't end up with this weak pawn on E5 as happened in the game. Right. Um, so yeah, this one might have been like a better way to kind of get what you were trying to do because now you break up the structure and if black takes twice, then like you're just so much more active here with your rooks that I think it's, uh, close to winning. I mean, not easy, but close to winning. Um, okay. Anyway, let's get to the end game. So we got this one, h6, rook d4 here here so yeah at some point you realize things that went really wrong right so what it is what what is it that you think you misevaluated here um i i believe too much in the position after uh one of the rooks goes to d8 mm -hmm. i play rook d1 he takes on d8 and then i have the the pawn on d6 i thought that that pawn was going to get me way more than it did Right, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Like, basically, Rook ends up passive and not doing anything. And then, yeah, Black right. is happy to keep their king passive as long as your Rook is also passive, right? For Black, that's a, that's a good trade, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we kind of had this assumption, like, Black was going to spend some time doing this. And then I think you're right. Then you go this way, and you can put some pressure... Um, as you were saying during the game, but yeah, your opponent all of a sudden started playing very well. Rook f8, really strong move. Yeah, I was kind of getting terrified. I was like, yo, why is he <laughs> doing? He's, he's a legendary suddenly. <laughs> yeah, no, th this yeah actually was, was very tricky. I was like, how did he play this opening and suddenly he's like just playing circles around me in the end game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of surprising. Um, for sure. But then, okay, he kind of gives it back. Um, right at the moment, actually here, I was thinking, if he just goes rook h3, looks yeah, really yeah, nice. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought rook h3, and, you know, I was just waiting to see how he does it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so something, well, went wrong. I guess he saw some ghosts with your king coming in. Um, Rook f5. Oh, you know, actually, I gotta go back. Earlier was kind of funny. You, um, when your opponent played queen d6, you're like, oh, I wonder if their idea is like rook d8 or what's. You're quite. You're wondering what's the point of this move. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was just to defend the pawn. Yeah. Um, he just couldn't play queen d7, and he wanted to defend the pawn. I, yeah. <laughs> I just, I was just like, it's not good. Like, that's not a, you know, you didn't have to defend the pawn. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah, definitely not a great move. I think, like, bishop b4 or something, yeah, would have been um, 
would have been better. But yeah, I remember you were kind of wondering about that. Um, so yeah, I think you just just wanted to hold on to the to the pun. Um, let's see. There actually there was one moment I forgot to ask you about here. Um, castles. So I think you were calculating in your head what would happen if Black played Rook B8 here, um, preparing C5. Yeah. And then I think you said, at least when you were calculating, the plan was to go DC, and you're, you were happy with that. Yeah, because um, he could... Uh... I think that was one of the things I looked at, but I think somewhere in there I didn't like it because, again, my rook was hanging. Um, oh, so, you, so bishop f3 takes and, like, bishop takes d1. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, what about, uh, like, because knight on e5, was, though? Uh, uh, yes, my knight would be hanging. I think it was not... I think it wasn't in this position. Cause I think he played bishop e7. Yeah. Because uh, after I think, because I think I was thinking I was calculating this after bishop e7. Um, oh, I see. After bishop, yeah. Because I think I was I was calculating this after bishop e7. Because after bishop e7, now if he plays c5, then I take play d c5. Um, but no, yeah, it still doesn't work because I mean he just. My eyes hanging, so <laughs> I, I was thinking that uh, you know D C five, and then he would take my queen, and I'd take his queen, and you know he gets my, my rook and my, his bishops behind the queen. But you're right; he could just take my knight. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I don't remember exactly because here on C five, you could um you can just take on B seven. If Black did it on the next move, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you're calculating like G four rook B eight something like that. Um, but but yeah, it felt like you you missed that in the, these lines that this knight is is on pre. Um, and I think it actually so this thing happened a little bit like here you were considering bishop g5 several times and then eventually you saw queen takes d4 is a problem. Yeah. Um, but I want to say not super fast like event only eventually you came around to it and then realized oh wait actually maybe you should um, defend the pawn. Um, so yeah, one thing you maybe might, might want to think about is like uh, just keeping track of the opponent's captures, especially when we're visualizing, you're calculating anything. It's very easy to miss any capture, like uh, I mean, even like forcing moves or tactics for the opponent. But even just the captures, uh, it's very important to just kind of like keep track of what's hanging, basically what's under attack and what's um, what's defended and what's not. Right. Um, especially in uh, in rapid uh, as well, because things are moving moving pretty quickly. So, anyways, going back to the end game, yeah, we kind of end up misevaluating this one, which I thought was okay, very interesting and, and instructive. So, yeah, just to clear up the point, rook takes definitely better because you keep your rook active, and um, I think it's still actually pretty unclear at this point. Like, black should just sacrifice that pawn and try to go active himself but at least you have more counterplay uh from your point of view and yeah this i think gives you better chances because the game it did look quite scary it looked like it, yeah it might have been really uh just like close to winning um for black um okay but then some real strange things started happening so h4 fine you won king e3 great move just you can't do anything so don't ruin your position just stay put and now your opponent starts to go wrong with rook e5, king f4, and uh, and g3. Okay, so <laughs> this is the moment. Yeah, we got to analyze very carefully. What happened here? We played f takes g3. It was only seven seconds. Um, but we still have yeah. two and a half minutes on the clock. So that's a lot of time still. Yeah, I think I saw... I. I think I was afraid that after hg3, he would just play h3. Um, but that was not a threat, because I could just... Maybe I could play f3. Hmm. But hold up, your last move was king f4. Um, I mean, after g3. Mm -hmm. 
like after he plays g3 i was thinking that um if i played h takes g3 he would play h3 yeah, but king f4 came with a uh, with a bigger threat than yeah, going after right. black spawns oh right oh yeah he's also <laughs> wait his was his rook just his rook was just completely hanging there mm-hmm <laughs> His rook was just completely hanging. Well, I uh, got distracted. His his distraction worked, it seems. Oh yeah, big time. But like the thing is, I don't know. Something happened because like you should play poker. <laughs> <laughs> right. G three was. I mean, it's it's kind of a shocking move, and it can definitely um, like kind of throw like a wrench into everything we were thinking about. Um, but when this happens, when, I mean, did you feel like when your opponent played G3, like, oh my god, like, what's happening? Or what was your... I I thought that, I mean, I thought that, I thought that G3 gave me a chance. I didn't realize he just hung his brook. I thought, I, I actually thought that he was just giving me a chance. Um, right. But, yeah. Turns well, out he gave me a lot more than a chance. <laughs> well, but that's okay. So already there, if you feel like your opponent gives you a chance hopefully that is like a trigger to pause right because that means you might have something you might have a win it's like a puzzle right like it's like giving you the position white to play find the best move um so ideally this should be a trigger to kind of like pause and just take some time try to come up with some candidate moves i think what a lot of players do and maybe you fall into this trap as well is like okay g3 we clearly have an option to take with both pawns and then we just kind of like tunnel vision on that like oh is fg better or hg better oh h3 or hg then black goes h3 and oh i don't want that and then you just decide quickly on fg but yeah completely forgetting <laughs> about the rest of the board um so yeah it can it can uh it can happen but yeah i think the trick is to just yeah, as much as you can, try to, like, get back to the present and, um, well, just look for options and, and just spend a little bit of, of time. Especially if you feel like, oh, the opponent did something weird or they might have messed up. Exactly the moment to spend your time and try to try to figure out what's what's going on. Because, yeah, of course, why can just take the rook and then rook d1 on anything, yeah. right? Like, just stopping. Right. Um, and maybe this was the opponent's idea trying to get some pawn, but uh, yeah, you're very much in time and um, you need a little bit of nerves of steel to go for this, but once you see the rook is on the back rank, hopefully, um, uh, yeah, the, the evaluation is clear. Um, okay, but then we get the king and pawn endgame. And uh, okay, on rook d5, I think, yeah, you you can just quickly see that that should be a good king and pawn in game and go for it. But then here, we again played really, really fast this part. Like it was just a few seconds per move. And I think on almost every move here, you had options <laughs> to at least consider. Maybe better than what you played, but at least worth uh, considering. I, think I, I just saw that, I think that either he would let me get to h7 or he would leave the d pawn so that was my I, I thought that either he would let me get to h7 or he would um leave the d pawn so i think that i thought i was winning already here right but that's that's just a very that's a dangerous assumption because you you're not sure that you're winning and there could be other resources in the the position for for black so for instance one thing the opponent didn't really uh pay attention to was that he can actually just make his own pass pawn right so um i mean he was playing really fast as well but yeah black can play like uh d4 here for example and then or let's say c4 yeah, I thought he. I, yeah, I thought his best chance was C four. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then if you're if you're going this way, I mean you're uh, you're not ahead here. Oh yeah, because my king's in front of my pawn, so I will have to move my king. Yeah.
Right. So this could have been, this could have gone in super yeah, super this messy. Would have been because takes takes and this is a uh, there's something to talk about here. Yeah, I mean actually like black queens first, right? Like black might even be <laughs> be the one playing for the win and in, in the end. Um, so. So the, the real the main point here is that king and pawn in games can be surprisingly tricky. And you have to be careful when making assumptions like, oh, I should just be totally winning here. Because you miss one resource and all of a sudden, not just you're not winning, you're actually like losing the game, <laughs> possibly, right? So uh, you have to be very, very careful. At this point, I think it's actually still not too late if you drop back this way. And the idea would be that if black keeps pushing, then your king first takes these pawns and then you're you're winning again. And if Black's King, let's say, tries to, you know, stop you, then you you run your G-Pawn. So I think White still has good chances with some kind of tricky uh, principle of two weaknesses thing like this, where your King is always threatening and you're running the Pawn. But you could have made your life a lot easier, I think, by spending, like, a few moments here and looking for, let's say, the strongest um, the strongest option. So maybe let's, let's treat this one as, like, a little puzzle, like... What should white do? Because I would say g4, definitely not the cleanest uh, way to proceed here. Hmm. I guess to consider, things to consider would be king e5. Hmm. I still think g4 is, well, g4 is at least still something to think about, but probably not the cleanest, like I said. Um, uh, I, don't, I can't really think of any other moves to consider, though. We could consider c3, c4, a3, and a4, but... Well, how do you evaluate king e5 since you mentioned this move? Um, king e5, I'm threatening to start taking black's pawns. Um, he could push the d pawn, and if he pushes the d the d pawn, I would play king d5. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe I'm going to be taking his pawns. So, if I play king e5. And instead, he played king c6. Uh, then I would play king e6, and I believe that's a win. Um, hmm. Yeah, so I think in this position, king e5 might just be better. Yeah, absolutely. King e5 is super simple. It's like you, well, number one, you hold on to your strong d pawn. So now you actually have like two pass pawns that black has to deal with. And of course, your king stays really active and keeps these pawns in check. So yeah, king d5 here is totally winning. You can also just take because yeah, black just has nothing on the, uh, black can't, can't push the pawns anymore with your king there. So I think this would have been, yeah, easily the cleanest. Because it just doesn't give black this possible um, counterplay. I, I'm assuming that's just what you overlook during the game, that black has a majority and can make their own pass pawn. I, I did see that. I thought that that's, that was his like only chance to do anything, but I, I didn't think it was fast enough, so I think I should have spent some time to calculate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we want to be really careful with assumptions like that because... We can often just be wrong, you know, we're just not perfect. And yeah, the king is kind of stepping in front of your own pawn. And yeah, that messes up the race for you as well. Um, and yeah, let's just say the other idea that I think would be very easy um, would just be GH. So what's the advantage of taking the pawn over G4? It's just you don't leave your opponent with any possible pawns on the king side anymore. And you just get your outside pass pawn. And I think this is actually a very easy plan to win the game as well. Because here it's not about promoting the pawn, it's just about distracting the king, which has to immediately run, right? And then, of course, you just go this way and win on, um, win on the, the other side of the board. Um, right, that makes sense. 
yeah so i think either of these two and you win easily after g4 okay your opponent didn't really find the best um defense either but yeah definitely that could have gone very wrong <laughs> against a, like slightly more experienced uh king and pawn in game player they would have kind of recognized like oh they have they have some counterplay um yeah. too um, but the main lesson is just that king and pawn endgames are notoriously tricky. And even if it looks simple, but you have time, I would still recommend just spending some time to like really, really make sure. Um, especially with increment. Yeah. <laughs> you said it was like torture. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I thought increment is good in bad positions because it means your opponent... Well, your opponent has to like beat you over the board, right? They can't just flag you. Yeah, um, it was like well, when I when I realized that it was slipping away, I was like, oh my gosh, I have I have, I have to play this out. <laughs> it was like I it was like I have to keep thinking about this, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I guess there's no there's no mercy in in bad positions, but it always gives you hope. Um, well, I don't know. I, I definitely recommend playing in increments just so that more things are decided on the board. I mean, I actually, so I actually never played a game with increment before maybe like past couple of months. Oh, wow. Like, uh, so I've mo most of my chess games have been 3 0 and 5 0. Um, so then I recently, in the past couple of months, started playing a little bit of 15 uh, 10 because a lot of the dojo tournaments are 15 10. And then for Blitz, I have played a little bit of 3-2. Mm -hmm. And I've, kind of been, I've actually kind of enjoyed playing with Increment. I do like 10-0 still a little bit more than 15-10. But I've liked the... Uh, I think... I mean, I do think I'm gener generally playing mostly better with Increment, <laughs> to be honest. No, for sure. Yeah, I mean, because you you're, don't have to worry about getting flagged in a position where you're like up a rook or up a queen. You know, like you, <laughs> you just win those now and... Um, ten zero, I think, is totally fine because you you get a lot of time, so you don't have to blitz like from the opening. So I think that's good for like some quick. It's still very quick, but it's good for like some uh, casual training because it doesn't take forever, and you still get a pretty reasonable game. Um, well, uh, cool. Did did you have any um, any other questions on this game? Um, let's see. Oh, was was Bishop F four even worth it? Oh, Bishop <laughs> was, F four is great. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this was even if any of these threats are real. If I was, I was just unsure if I was helping him make threats. Um, mm. let's see anything else? Was Bishop E seven his best move in the opening? Right here. Um, that's what I thought he would play after I castled Queenside. Um, but he ended up never castling and never regretting it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to say. So yeah, Bishop F4 is really good just because you're improving your piece with tempo. And um, no, I, I want to say you had 100% the right thought process here because you were saying like Black was ready to castle next move and you were just looking for moves that make threats, right? That make it uh, difficult for Black to actually do that. So Bishop F4 I think is one of the only good moves that white has in this position. You can play knight c4 as well, but I think black just backs up and it's not like a huge achievement for white. But bishop f4 doesn't make things easy for black because the queen doesn't have a lot of good squares in the position. So now, of course, you're threatening some discoveries. And um, yeah, with queen b4, as we discussed, queen just gets kicked around, I think, like with a3. Um, knight c6 might have been good here as well. Uh, I think your move is actually not not bad, but maybe uh, does yeah get pretty complicated after c5. Um, but yeah, objectively bishop f4 was good, and for black bishop e7, I'm not sure. I was thinking like maybe rook b8 is a move um, to try to play c5, but but black is very underdeveloped, so uh, I'm I'm sure you're okay here. Like you have moves like knight e4, queen g3. Um, you have various ideas you can. You can try. Um, yeah, you can definitely think about playing bishop f4 here because you kind of like defend your knight, and that might be interesting as well. Um, just quickly see c5. 
So this would be kind of a fun line. Takes, 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 takes. Black has to defend. You take here. You've sacrificed the exchange, but if black takes this one, that kind of runs into some discovery, possibly. I actually did see a line like this, and I thought that after uh, <laughs> I did think about a line like this at some point, um, but I thought that after rook c8, I just, you know, I was just down material. <laughs> um, but I guess it's it's actually not so bad. It, yeah, it can be, especially if you're up in development at the end, you might have some threats. So it's Okay, it's a very long line. I think it's just kind of for interest to look at this one. Um, but uh, yeah, you have other moves here as well, like queen g3 and um, so on. But uh, no, Raw, I thought you played well. I thought you did great, given that you had to kind of like play on stream and voice your thoughts. Um, I think it actually, at some, at some points, it felt like it put you into a very concrete mindset where you're just like kind of calculating and trying to make the most use of your time. Uh, and I would say that's a good, that's a good thing to work on when you're playing is like, especially using the opponent's time to calculate variations, try to understand, is this move actually a threat? Uh, just like you were doing in the game, like, is the opponent threatening something here? Can I take this pawn? Is this defended? Um, because like, yeah, especially it just takes time to figure that stuff out during the game. And the concrete stuff I think often is pretty decisive, um, when it comes to like, just finding lines and finding the right uh, attacking idea. Um, so yeah, main takeaway I would say for you is really try to, let's say, identify moments in the game where you feel like things are possibly really sharp and definitely try to be very concrete and spend your time in those moments. Um, and maybe that means saving time earlier, like on these moves, queen f3, bishop e3, Probably these could have been played a little bit faster, although I don't, that's definitely not a big deal. I think the, the bigger point is just to spend more time when the situation feels like it gets really messy, like c5, everything is hanging. This is a moment where you just have to kind of think and calculate. Um, it's not one we can quite like, you know, reason out. Um, we just have to look at lines and, and see what's, uh, what's possible. Um, and then in the end game, yeah, I mean, like, we saw at the end here in this king and pawn in game, you guys collectively probably made like multiple mistakes, right? That swing the evaluation back and forth. So uh, just keep that in mind when you get into these end games, these things are really tricky. And just spending a little bit of time hopefully gives you better chances, like capitalizing on your opponent's mistakes or avoiding avoiding your own. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not just you. That's something I see all the time. I, it, it was an old like, um, is an old meme with me and Jesse when we would cover classical games on the channel. They would be like really hard fought, really well played. And then like the players get into the end game and like five minutes later, after like mutual blunders from both sides, like the game is over. It's like somehow people get into the end game and then they just start like blitzing it out like fast, fast, fast. And we're like, what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> you guys still had so much time on your clock. like. Yeah, so definitely, guys, don't don't sleep on on the end game. Um, okay, cool. Often we'll wrap it up there. Hopefully, that was helpful. And yeah, uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wish you the best of luck on your road to fifteen hundred. I'm sure you'll get there soon with just a little bit of playing and practice. And uh, folks, we'll see you hopefully in the um, the training groups coming up with uh, with David. Yep. All right, awesome. I, will be, I guess I'll be right back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks again for joining. I'm going to go on a quick break, guys, and I will catch you all uh, in a little bit.